Welcome to the series premiere of Paradox Home Chemistry. In this video, we will synthesize the useful solvent ethyl acetate by reacting ethanol and acetic acid in a process called esterification. Before we begin, a quick safety warning. This experiment uses concentrated acids that can burn and blind you. In addition, we will be distilling ethyl acetate, an extremely flammable solvent. Do not conduct this experiment unless you are wearing the proper safety gear and you are working in a well-ventilated area. Alright then, let's get started. Add 30 milliliters of ethanol, which I'll show you how to make in my next video, to a 250 milliliter flat bottom boiling flask. Now you add 30 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. So, once these two are mixed, you can begin adding the 6 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid that'll act as a catalyst. Notice that the flask is under ice. The low temperature keeps side reactions from occurring. You'll want to add the acid at the rate of 1 milliliter a minute, or longer, with constant mixing to keep the temperature down. So, here it is after I've added all the acid. I allowed it to sit in the ice bath for a while to let it cool down. After you've ensured that the mixture is homogeneous, you can take the flask out and set it up for reflux. Once you've attached a reflux condenser, you can turn on the heat and bring the solution to a boil. I'm using a hot water bath to provide even heating. It's also useful to have the mixture agitated with a magnetic stirrer. This will prevent dangerous superheating that could eject hot liquid forcefully from the flask. Allow the temperature to remain at about 90 degrees Celsius. Here it's at about 88 degrees. Let the reaction proceed for another 30 minutes, keeping a close watch on the temperature. As you can see, the solution in the flask is gently boiling. While we're waiting for the solution to reflux, we might as well see what we're doing reaction-wise. We are performing an acid-catalyzed esterification reaction. One mole of ethanol reacts with one mole of acetic acid under a sulfuric acid catalyst to produce one mole of ethyl acetate and one mole of water. The theoretical yield for this reaction is 51.08 milliliters of ethyl acetate. Okay, the solution is done refluxing. Now it's time to set up for simple distillation to purify the crude ethyl acetate. The flask is heated by a hot water bath held below 100 degrees Celsius. The vapors travel through the fractionating bulb and into the 300 millimeter gram condenser. The distillate is collected in a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Note that the yellow tint is due to the rubber stoppers in my apparatus. Also, I wanted to mention that some suppliers sell distillation kits that use gram condensers diagonally rather than vertically. This is inefficient because your distillate will get trapped within the condenser, backflowing if you lower the temperature. That is why I later switched to a 300 millimeter Liebig condenser. Anyway, continue the distillation until you've distilled off about two thirds of the mixture. Here is the distillate. I'm going to pour this into a graduated cylinder to get a rough idea of my yield so far. The yellow tint seen earlier isn't a problem as it was removed by the distillation. As you can see here, I've collected just under 40 milliliters of crude ethyl acetate. Prepare a solution of 3 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate in 15 milliliters of water and add it to a separatory funnel. This will neutralize any acid still present in the ethyl acetate. Then add the distillate. Stopper the funnel and agitate the contents vigorously for at least two minutes, remembering to vent often. 
The stopper leaked a little bit. Oh well. Allow the two layers to separate. Now drain off the lower aqueous layer and discard it. Do not drain off the ethyl acetate layer. Repeat the wash using a solution of 3 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride and 15 milliliters of water. This helps pull out any residual ethanol. I'm shaking the funnel this way to prevent leakage from the stopper. Here you can clearly see the lower aqueous layer and the upper ethyl acetate layer. Again drain off the lower aqueous layer and discard it. The cloudiness in the water layer is due to the calcium chloride and residual sodium carbonate reacting forming insoluble calcium carbonate. After draining off the water, transfer the ethyl acetate to a clean, dry flask. Add about 1.5 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride to the product and set it up on a magnetic stirrer. Stir it for 20 to 30 minutes. This dries out the ethyl acetate. Now decant the ethyl acetate into a suitable boiling flask and set up for another simple distillation. Bring the ethyl acetate to a boil and turn on the water pump attached to your condenser to start cooling. A small amount of ether that was formed in the reaction may come over from 35 to 40 degrees C. However, no ether came over during my distillation. At the time this video is filmed, I did not have a thermometer in my distillation apparatus, so I kept the water bath at 85 to 90 degrees Celsius and collected distillate until it stopped coming over. In the end, only a few milliliters of liquid was left in the boiling flask. If you do have a thermometer in your distillation apparatus, collect a fraction that comes over between 74 and 79 degrees Celsius. Take the distillate and pour it into a suitable glass bottle for storage. In the end, I found that I had collected 22.04 grams or 24.57 milliliters of pure ethyl acetate. This represents a 48% yield, but remember that some was lost during distillation as well as when the SEP funnel stopper leaked. Store the bottle in a cool area to minimize evaporation. So here it is, pure ethyl acetate. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on Paradox Home Chemistry.